So I just had the opportunity to help my dad remodel their bathroom. It's something my mom has been asking for for a very long time and they are great parents and have been great to me. So I was very excited at the opportunity to help uh, do something for them. Now just a full disclosure, neither me or my dad have ever remodeled a bathroom before. And so this video is going to walk you through our experience, but in no way are we professionals at remodeling bathrooms. And because I am not a professional and chances are if you're watching this video, you probably are as well. I wanted to compile a resource or a video that you have to show what we did step by step, day by day. And then not only that, I want to link down below in the description all of the video tutorials that I watched from actual professionals that I found were incredibly helpful and really helped move the process along. And without those uh, helpful tutorials, I wouldn't have wouldn't have been able to do this project. And another thing that I found find hard with these kind of projects is knowing which tools or which materials to use. So I will try to link down below all the tools and uh, materials that we used, and also kind of explain the purposes as I go through this tutorial. So hopefully you find this video helpful if you're about to take on your own bathroom remodel, or you find it helpful in the fact that by the end of this you decide that you are just going to hire. A professional to redo your bathroom. Whatever the scenario is, I respect you and uh, hopefully this helps. So this is where our journey begins. This is what the bathroom looked like before we started working on this. You see, we just have some dated tile here and it was just due for an upgrade, kind of older colors. And this is actually the bathroom that I grew up with, with four brothers. So a little bit of wear and tear, due for an upgrade. So let's start with day one demolition day. So the first thing we did was remove all of the baseboards and the frames and then the actual vanity and of course the toilet itself. I was actually surprised at how easy it was to remove the toilet. It's just a couple of screws basically. This is what the room looks like after we got all that stuff removed. It was nice because it gave us room to move around and of course to start ripping up the floor. And ripping up the floor was its own task, getting these tiles removed. We found having a tool like this helped out a ton. I would highly recommend it. It will save you a ton of time. If you... But just a heads up, it is pretty loud. Another thing to keep in mind when you're getting ready to do a bathroom remodel is your plan to get rid of all of the crap because you'd be surprised at how much tile, how much room those these tiles take up and everything else inside there. So always have a plan for that. Now, after we got the floor all removed, now it was time to move on to the actual shower tiles. Just got a hammer here and started smacking it basically to get uh, to the, the studs. I ended up upgrading to a heavier hammer to get this done. This took a minute, but it was actually really kind of fun, as you can imagine, just kind of smashing through the wall here. We did use an X-Acto knife to kind of save the sheetrock where we needed it to. But besides that, this was pretty much just using a hammer the entire time. Now it was around this moment where I was feeling probably overconfident and starting to think that this bathroom remodel is gonna be done in a breeze. It had only been day one and it felt like we were accomplishing so much, getting rid of uh, basically all of the debris and kind of giving a fresh start here. You can see this is me cutting through the drywall to make sure that we get the top there nice and straight and that we have those cuts on the studs and then removing like a ton of nails and debris and just like cleaning this up. And you can see this is kind of after we cleaned up some of the debris here, and then uh, this is what everything looked like after day one and a reminder this is what it looked like before the day started so it felt like we were making some crazy good grounds uh, which it was a really productive day on the first day so at this point I'm starting to think oh we'll have this thing done in no time a couple days max but no that's not the case now the goal for day two was to get all of the hardy board, uh, and, which is like a cement board that we use to waterproof the floor and the shower. Uh, get that from the Home Depot, pick it all up and take it over back over to the house. I underestimated how long that would take because it's heavy stuff. You gotta load it on, put it on the trailer. And the goal was to get that all cut, put on the floor and also put onto the shower as well. That did not happen. You'll see uh, working with hardy board is, is a little bit of a task in itself. Now, keep in mind when I say day one or day two, it doesn't mean that we were working on that like the entire day. We are doing this a lot of times on Saturdays or on weekends or at nights. And so the first day on the demolition, that was a Saturday where we had a full day. The second time I think was the next Saturday when we went through and did that. And this was like a full day as well. Um, but a lot of the days going forward, you'll see it's like a couple hours here and there. I'll try to make that disclaimer just so you can have an idea of how much time it actually did take us to complete this project. But now let's move on to day two. Now, in case you are like me and have no idea what hardy backing board is or cement backing board is, it's basically it's a way to waterproof your shower, or in this case, we're actually using it for the floor as well. And what you want to do if you're using it on the floor is get some thin set, uh, mix that up, and then lay it down. You don't have to put a crazy amount down. You just want enough to hold it in place because what we ended up doing is actually using um, these screws. You actually want to make sure they're the specific type of screws that can be used for cement backing board. 
of these ones right here. So we went through and put it kind of in place and then grabbed a bunch of screws and basically just screwed it to the floor. This acted for a couple of different things. One, it helped waterproof the floor and then also it helped uh, raise it so that it was on the same level of the tiles that we had there before. Now cutting this can be a little bit challenging. We used a grinder to cut it. You can use a circular saw as well, but just know it's a little bit, it's pretty heavy, it's pretty dense, so it does take a while to cut. And that's one of the things that we underestimated how long it would take us to actually go through and make the cuts for this, especially when we get to the actual um, shower portion. Now, one thing that is important to do when you are working with backing board is when you do have uh, areas that are gonna be touching like this, where you're making cuts, you do want to make sure that you are using some of this cement board drywall joint tape. So once you get everything in place and you have those joints there, you want to lay down a thin layer of thin set down on the actual uh, cracks here. You can see that's what we go through and do. And then after that, then you apply the tape to the top. And then once it's laid down, then we just took a putty knife and kind of rubbed it in to make sure that it's really uh, helping uh, secure that joint. And we did not hit our goal on getting all the backing board up on day two. This is where we ended up finishing off on day two. So some good progress, but not as far as we want it to be. Day three, the goal was to get the shower niches installed and the rest of the backing board up for the shower. The shower niche little template things make it really easy to install the actual niche. Putting the tile on them is a different story that we'll talk about later. Um, you see, we opted in to go with two, which came with its own little problems, making sure they were level and things like that. If you're gonna do a shower niche and it's your first time doing a shower niche, I would recommend only doing one or maybe not even doing a shower niche at all just because of the complexity that it caused down the road. And you'll probably also notice that we kept the bathtub installed. It's a pretty nice bathtub. We felt no need to take it out. And I'm glad we didn't. I think it made the project a lot easier. Um, as far as the backing board goes, we just made sure to screw it into the studs here and then cut out for all the shower fixtures, of course. And this is basically how we ended off on day three. Some pretty good progress. We almost got all the backing board up. You can see there's a little section there that needed a little bit more work. Day four was a little bit of a lighter day. We basically hung up the rest of the backing board and then did all of the taping here, as you can see in the joints for the backing board. Now this is an important uh, place to disclaim that there are multiple ways to waterproof a shower. I went through and watched lots of videos. I'll link those all down below to help you decide maybe which way is best for you. We decided this is the best way for us, but honestly, depending on your situation, there may be better um, ways to do it. So be sure to check out those resources down below from professionals who actually know what they're talking about and kind of explain the pros and cons on that. Day five was all about red guard. Now having the backing board there is not enough alone to waterproof your shower. So this red guard is a way to waterproof it. So what you want to do is basically apply it everywhere where the backing board is at. And you don't only want to do one coat, chances are you want to do two or three coats. So I went through and did a couple of coats of this red guard. Now you'll see me in this video, I don't have a mask and I wanted to just call out that is not the way to do this. This stuff has a very high smell. And if I could go back and do this, I would definitely make sure that you wear a mask or some sort of have really good ventilation in the room. And then this does take some time to dry, but this is what it ends up looking like after a few coats once it's dry. So red guard was kind of like day five and day six, and then day seven was tiling the floor. And this was probably one of the most satisfying parts because we actually start to see something that is kind of the finished product. I'm not gonna go over tiling a ton because there's lots of great tutorials out there. I'll link the ones that I watched down below. But these spacers here were awesome that we did use. They're self-leveling. I just wanna call those out because they made the job incredibly easy and made sure the floor was level. Another thing that I wanna call out because I find that these are little tips that always help me when I'm watching these kind of videos is make sure when you're putting the tile against the tub, one thing to make it look really nice is having one of these metal aluminum uh, uh, L angles basically where you put the tile underneath it and it really gives it a clean finish. So I know that's like a little thing and probably most people already know that, but I just wanted to call it out in case, you know, that's helpful for you. Day eight was just a couple of hour day where we spent the time grouting the tile, which is very satisfying to see it all come together. But of course, there's still lots of work to do in the bathroom. This is where I started getting a little bit more uh, false confidence as well before things really started to get uh, challenging. But after we got the floor all in, then we went and added the baseboards as well, uh, just to kind of finish off this portion um, of the bathroom. We didn't caulk or anything. We just added the baseboards so that they were there and in place so that we could start doing the tile for the shower. And before you know it, a project that I thought was gonna take seven days is now on day eight, and little do I know that it is about to get even longer, and this tile project is gonna take way longer than expected. 
If anything, I gain so much respect for people that do shower tiles and I am internally grateful for the videos that were created on YouTube of people who uh, talk about and share their experience. Like I said, I can't shout them out enough down below in the description. Those are the videos that I watched in order to uh, kind of figure out the strategy here. We ended up putting these boards to help keep things level. So we actually don't start from the tub because if you start from the tub, it's not level. So we put the boards, made sure they were level and then started laying the thin set. And you can see how inexperienced I am with this thin set. I'm sure if anybody who knows what they're doing is watching, they're like, wow, he's so slow at that. Um, but just know this is probably, this is probably the hardest part because we wanted to take a, a long time or we wanted to make, take our time to make sure that it looked good. Because if you rush tile, it can look really bad but it, we underestimated how long this would actually take. So getting the first tile up was a huge success. Now we wanted to get kind of basically the foundation. So we went through and laid the tile um, across there. You can see we just have those two by fours that we later will remove, but we wanted to make sure that that was in place. You can see I ended up, we ended up removing the tile a couple of times because we just couldn't get it level. Even though we had the boards level, you can see we put lots of shims inside of there just because these walls are not perfectly level because it's an older house. Uh, so it came with all sorts of complexities there, but. Just know you can do it. We, if we can do it, you can do it. But it will, just will take a lot of patience and a little bit of time. You can see how many times we like remove this, put it back, and then make sure it was all good. Uh, shout out to my dad. He was uh, super patient. And, and at least, you know, we were uh, suffering together on building this thing. We had each other. But this is how we ended the day um, on uh, day what, eight. Oh, good old day nine. We will call this the horrors of the shower niche. As I mentioned before in the video, if you are looking to do a shower niche, don't do two, first of all. And if you're about to do one, it's your first time doing tile, maybe think again. I cannot tell you how many times I went to Home Depot because we had to get a different thing or a different little part. And the amount of times we went and measured and cut and recut and then realized that we cut too much and then had to go back to Home Depot uh, for this uh, shower niche. So uh, like I said, I'll have tutorials down below that I watched to do the shower niche. There's some things, some technical things that you need to be aware of when you are doing this as well. Uh, they did turn out looking really good, but I cannot tell you how many times we removed tiles, added them, made sure they were level, and then had to adjust even more. And once we got one done, it was kind of just defeating to know that we had to go and do the other one. I kid you not when I say, it's so sad to say, but these two shower niches took us all day and not just a couple of hour days. I wanna say it probably took us like eight plus hours. So shout out to anybody who does shower niches because your skill after we're doing this, like I have so much respect for you. We did use the same kind of aluminum uh, frames here on the edges to make it look really clean. Just a little tip there. So you can see me, this is me going and, and kind of wedging my way into those. And then we did do the kind of an accent color on the back there, as you can see, like little accent tiles. Um, but I cannot, I cannot understate how frustrating this day truly was. And if I could go back, I might consider just hiring out the shower niche or even just the tiling in general for this. You can do it. You're probably better off than, uh, than we are, but uh, just know it's a little tough. The next couple of days were just kind of half days or a couple hour days where we went and continued on the shower tile. A kind of tricky part was working around the shower niche. This is another reason why doing the shower niche kind of made the project a little bit more complicated. You can see we kind of had to make those cuts there. And if you are new to cutting tile, I have to say it is a tricky thing for me when I go through and I do cutting for tile. I feel like I always break the tile. I have to make multiple cuts every single time and I have wasting a ton of tile. One of the nice things was the tile that we did choose was a bigger tile. So there was less cuts once we got around like the niches and different parts of the shower. So if you are, is your, if it is your first time showering, uh, doing showering, hopefully not your first time showering, first time doing a shower tile, having a bigger tile, I think made it a little bit easier. To finish off the edges of the tile, we use this wall pencil tile basically. This is a little bit on the pricey side, so if you wanted a cheaper option, you can go with the aluminum uh, things that we use in the shower as well. I think both look really nice, but we just went with the uh, pencil for this option right here. And you can apply it after the tile is already there, as you can see like this, just with a little bit of thin set. Day 13 was grouting the tile. Sorry, I didn't get a video. I was just kind of burnt out and totally forgot to, but this the tile ended up looking really nice here. And then day 14 was getting the all the other things installed, like the toilet, the vanity, and all the shower heads and different things like that into the actual bathroom. And I apologize, I didn't get a ton of video after this point because I was just was ready for this project to be done. Uh, you do wanna make sure you have the wax ring on the toilet and then the bolts on there. I was actually surprised at how easy it is to install a toilet as well. I was actually kind of worried about that part, but my dad was uh, super helpful in this uh, area for sure. And then of course, the next thing that we needed to do is actually paint this kind of tan color into a white and change out those lights. I didn't get that on video either, but this is what it ends up looking like after. 
You can see we wrapped the tile all the way around to the vanity to give it a little bit of a backsplash effect. And the tile looks super awesome here. A uh, little bit more modern look, kind of clean look here as opposed to like the brown tiles. Uh, my parents are super happy with the way that this turned out. It was fun to do this with my dad. Uh, we got to spend a lot of time together. But let me know what you think of this project down below in the comments. Are you getting ready to do your own bathroom? What would you have done differently than what we did? Let me know down below and we'll see you in the next one.